ignition, candles, brie, crackers, of course. And, oh, huh, hello. I'm Charles Nelson Riley. Yes, I'm still alive. Oh, and as I sit here preparing for the Y2K disaster, and probably Armageddon, I'm taking a look at how the greatest game shows went, as the poet said, into that good night. I can't think of a better way to bid the century, and perhaps this world, goodbye, than to watch the series finales of such classics as Password, What's My Line, and excuse my language, The Gong Show, and my beloved and wonderful match game, as well as many, many others for you. So please join me for the next eight hours, if we have enough electricity left as I settle in my stock of food, water, and 53 Lafitte Margot and raise a bottle to the end of the world and the ends of game show. We'll start by toasting the finale of the original run of Jeopardy. Oh, you heard of that. Art Fleming began hosting the show in 1964 and ended his career with this show from March 2nd, 1979. Take it away! Uh -huh. Hi, it's Chuck here again. Before the North American power grid crashes and there's panic in the streets, let me ask you, do you remember Double Dare, the game show with Alex Trebek? No. <laughs> well, it was fun for the four months it lasted. Alex Trebek, of course, went on to bigger and better things like classic concentration and the world famous Jeopardy. But let us take you back then to April 29th, 1977 to a bump in the road for young Mr. Trebek the final episode of Double Dare. Ta da Take it! Oh, welcome back to Y2 Play, Game Show Network's look at how great game shows met their demise. He sang, he danced, he was the leading man on Broadway in Cabaret. And Bert Comby, my friend, also hosted the final incarnation of Password. Bert, of course, was a semi-regular on Match Game and a regular ride as the host of Tattletales. Here he is on the final Super Password from March 24, 1989. You Game Show Network viewers know that I was pretty good on body language. I was very good because my partner was Miss Lucille Ball. But body language left the CBS schedule in January of 1986, which reminds me, should we all make it to January of 2000, I'll be celebrating my birthday on the 13th. Uh -huh. I'll be 39 <laughs> again. Can you believe it? There's not much shopping time, but the good sales will still be on, and I look marvelous in Sea Green, Cobalt, and Hunter. And money is always in good taste. While you contemplate that, here is the very last body language. Oh, hi. Now you see it. And as of 1975, now you don't. Now You See It was a game show hosted by Jack Nars, brother of game show host Tom Kennedy, whose real name is Jim Nars. Now, why Jack Nars never changed his name to Jack Kennedy, oh, we'll never know. In any case, Now You See It was last seen on June 13th, 1975. By the way, it featured a theme song actually called Chump Change, oh, written by Quincy Jones. I wonder whatever happened to him. Oh, hello. If the Earth isn't reduced to primordial ooze in the next 24 hours and Game Show Network is still on the air, you will still be able to get your weekly fill of wonderful Mr. Bill Cullen. Blockbusters was one of the 23, think of it, 23 shows hosted by the legendary Cullen who received his first Emmy nomination for hosting the show. Lucky for you, Blockbusters is still on Game Show Network, so you can tune in tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow if there is a tomorrow, <laughs> and if we're still alive. In the meantime, we will take you back to April 23rd, 1982, when Blockbuster said, Arrivederci, Roma. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, hi there. Charles Nelson Riley here, waiting for the end of the world as we know it by watching the ends of great game shows. Speaking of the decline of civilization, here comes the final episode of the original daytime run of oh, oh, The Newlywed Game. The Newlywed Game was one of the Chuck Barris gallery of art shows oh, 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 that brought the common folk trash, trash, into our homes. This version from 1974 seems quaint by comparison to what you see these days. The Newlywed Game, of course, came and went several times. Here is the first time it went from December of 1974. Welcome back to Y2 Play, the end of the millennium look at game shows that face <laughs> extinction. They say that when a shark stops moving, it dies. Well, card sharks stopped moving in 1989. Car Sharks was a popular game show hosted by Jim Perry from 1979 to 1981. It was then resuscitated with Bob Eubanks as host in 1986. Then Car Sharks was harpooned. Here then is the last of the great white card sharks. <laughs> Take it away! Hello, I'm Charles, and let me give you a little history quiz. What took 20 years, 100,000 men, and 6 million blocks of stone to create? Right, good for you. Yes, it was the Great Pyramids of Giza. Now, what does that have in common with the $25,000 pyramid? Dick Clark was there for the creation of both. Honestly, doesn't he look good? Now we're about to watch Dick Clark's final episode of the $25,000 pyramid. So here he is from 1988, looking exactly the same as he looked in 1988 B.C. Oh, oh, Dick Clark and the last of the Great Pyramids! I'm Charles Nelson Riley, and I've got a secret, but I'm not telling. What I am doing is watching all the final episodes of great game shows before the world ends. <laughs> Won't you join me? For 15 years, I've Got a Secret was a popular game show on CBS. And for 15 years, it was bad grammar. The contraction, I've, means I have. Thus making the title, I have got a secret, well, that's just plain wrong. And as a result, I've Got a Secret went off the air after the April 3rd, 1967 show, which you are about to see. Now, here's our wonderful Steve Allen, albeit grammatically challenged, I've got a secret. Oh, hi. It's nearly Y2K, and this is Y2Play, an end-of-the-century lovable look at the ends of game shows. Hi, I'm Charles Nelson Riley, and the password is... Well, password. Password had many lives as the daytime and nighttime hit, since its premiere in 1961. There were versions of Password on CBS, ABC, and NBC. Oh, it would have been on Fox if there was a Fox, but it wasn't. And the show itself made a guest appearance on The Odd Couple, along with Alan Ludden and his sex pot wife, uh, Betty, uh, what, uh, somebody, uh, she was a golden girl and uh, all the dogs were around her. Well, anyway, Betty something or other. What we are about to see is the last CBS nighttime episode from May 22nd, 1967. Hi, I'm Chuck, and to tell you the truth, if there's anything that is Y2K proof, it is to tell the truth. It first appeared in 1956 and was seen on network television as recently as 1991. Wow! Bud Collier spent 12 years asking the real Mr. So-and-so to please stand up, and stand up they did, all the way to Bud's final show on September 9th, 1968. This show features the grand dame of To Tell the Truth, Miss Kitty Carlisle, who is still a force to be reckoned with and a great broad. I predict that if the earth is laid to waste tonight, the sole survivor will be Kitty Carlisle. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Charles Nelson Riley, and here's a little TV fact. 
for 17.5% of the 20th century. What's my line, Rain, in primetime on CBS? That's 17 and a half years in primetime. Oh, unheard of in this day and age. The show you're about to see is one for the time capsule. It features Arlene Francis, the queen of What's My Line, and the original star of Arthur Miller's Broadway All My Sons. And it features an appearance by the show's creators, Mark Goodson and Bill Dodman. So here, from September 3rd, 1967, is the last broadcast of the original, timeless, legendary wonder, What's My Line? <laughs> From the sublime to the ridiculous, after showing you the gentle exits of those witty urban panel shows from the 50s and 60s, here is a bit of the garish 70s coming to a close. Yes, it's the final, and I'm going to talk other words, gong show. You've got such luminaries as Maxine Andrews, Jamie Farr, and Carl Ballantyne on the panel. Oh, <laughs> Carl Ballantyne. Of course, there's Gene Gene, the dancing machine, the inimitable Chuck Farris, and some of the worst acts that have ever been thrown out of the Catskill Hotel. Oh, it's July 21st, 1978, the day the network put the gong show, thank God, to rest. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charles Nelson Riley. And before all the computers crash, well, you were warned. I'm enjoying duck pate and game show finales in the comfort of my tastefully appointed bunker. We should all be lucky enough to rise from the ashes like that 70s success story, Family Feud. Family Feud is currently alive and well and hosted by that wonderful Louis Anderson. But this show you're about to see is the last of the original run with that kissing fool, oh, oh, Richard Dawson from 1985. I was still in school. Hello again, I'm Charles Nelson Riley. And if the end of the world is, in fact, a half hour away, <laughs> it's not. We must watch the very last of the remarkable run of the match game with my friend, Gene Rayburn. I am very proud to have been part of the continued success and popularity of Match Game. I am also proud to have been associated with my friend, Gene Rayburn, a wonderful man who I met 40 years ago when he replaced Dick Van Dyke on Broadway in Bye Bye Birdie. For 40 years, he has been my supporter. We lost Gene this year, and I know that if there is a game show in heaven, who else is hosting it but Gene? Here's one last match for our friend Gene Rayburn. It's Gene, those old battle axes, Betty White and Brett Summers, and of course me, I'm the youngest. Enjoy, and from all of us at Game Show Network, the healthiest, happiest of New Year's.